All right, so we are going to attempt to do the eye tutorial with Pixlr. My tutorial is right now in Photoshop terms. So Sydney and Michaela are here. We're going to attempt to do this with Pixlr. So you need an image of an eye. And I chose a green eye because that's my color eye. And try to get one where the focus is mostly on the eye. This one's pretty good. You don't need two eyes. You just need one eye. And then you're going to save that. You guys could probably save it to your Google Drive. Um, I right click and do save as. And then I have to remember where I save it to. This is my flash drive on my computer. Photography, green eyes, that works. And hit save. Does it have to be a certain color? I just picked my color because it's. I want it to be about me. Okay. So it's up to you. Then we will go to our Pixlr link here. Click on that. And we do Pixlr E, if you remember. E for excellent, E for experienced, E for amazing. No. Exciting, I don't know. <laughs> um, all right, so on your Pixlr, I would click Create New. And I'm going to call it iTutorial. And if you remember, our width is 2550. Is that right? I'm going to flip that. I'm going to do 3300 for the width and 2550 for the height. I am going to enable the background, so I'm going to click this thing, and I'm going to make it white. Click Create. All right, so I have Pixlr opened. I'm going to File, Open Image. Again, you probably, you have to get it from your Google Drive or wherever you saved it to. I remember I saved it to my flash drive to my photography folder, and what did I call it? I can't remember. I should really write this stuff down, right? Where did it go? Let's see if it shows up. Oh, it says green eyes. Huh, there you go. There it is. Move me up here. So this is the tutorial. It's written in Photoshop terms. Okay. So you need a picture of your eye, photo of your eye, which we took one off the internet, um, an image for your skin. So think about what skin you would like. This person chose a globe. I'm going to do cheetah print. You can do all kinds of tie-dye. Think of anything that you like um, for some skin texture. And then we're going to eventually add stuff inside our eyes too. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and go hunting for some skin texture. All right, so I found the texture I like. I went from cheetah to zebra, but I like it. So I right click, I copy. Let's see if this will paste in here. I did control V to paste. Perfect. Look at that. Now you are going to make this the size of your eye. Okay. Now you girls, you can keep looking for your texture while I kind of work ahead here. See if this is going to work or not. I don't know. Oh, see, I already did something wrong. So I'm going to, on this layer with the texture, I'm going to, if you right click, you can do hidden. And now it's there, but you can't see it on the main page. So that's like the eyeball in Photoshop. 
Photoshop, if I close this eyeball, it makes my numbers go away. Okay, but you have to right click on here and click hidden. So what my tutorial wants is for us to make a copy of our eyeball. So on that one, let's see, I right click and you go down to duplicate layer. And now you should have two of those. I really don't like that I can't see my layers. See how you have the background layer and the background copy? That's what yours should look like. Then, on my tutorial, it wants us to desaturate the upper layer. So I'm going to do image adjustments, and we're going to see if we can find desaturate on Pixlr. Uh, but see, so you don't have to go to image because you have adjustment right here. See how they're just like slightly different? Image desaturates at the bottom. in your black and white. All right, so in your layers, you should have your background copy, which is now desaturated, which also means black and white. And then underneath it, you should still have your background with the original colored eyeball, okay? Make sure you click on the background copy, and you're going to use the polygonal lasso tool. This is called lasso tool. Click on this. Click there and it'll come up here in a second this is just the crazy lasso you can like go nuts with it it's a selection tool the polygonal one is more straight edges like you can't go loopy doopy with it the oh visor I don't even know what this one is oh look at that that's if you're trying to like make letters and stuff. And then the magnet one is supposed to like kind of go with the vibe of your shape. But as you can see, you can still be imperfect with that. So I recommend using the polygonal tool and you're going to take your little plus there. You're gonna come along here you're going to select your eye. Now, click every so often. If you can hear my mouse clicking. So I go click, click. Especially when I go over the curves. Click, click. I'm ignoring the eyelashes. Now, only click once. If you double click, it will stop your selection and select everything. It's really frustrating. Yeah, just a second. Come along. Even get the gross goopiness of this. Okay, so now that's selected and let me go back to my tutorial real quick and see what I'm supposed to do. Oh, press backspace, okay. I don't know if backspace is gonna work, let's try it. Oh, it worked. So I clicked backspace on my keyboard, and now I have a colored eye. And if you look at your layers box, what you did was you selected, so you pretty much cut out the black and white eyes so that the paper underneath, the colorful eye, can show through. Okay. All right, so let me look at my tutorial here. After we do that, then you can copy your image into it. Let's see, we're going to paste our texture, which I already did. Look in your layer window, select the skin layer, change the layer mode. Okay, that's going to be tricky. So, so to unselect your eyeball, do control D, control D as in dog, to unselect that. Now you're going to go back to your layers and right click and make your texture visible. Make your texture visible. Now, I don't know where the layers mode is here. 
Oh, yes, I do. Ha! Right click on t the texture layer and you see blend mode. There's all these options. And I think my tutorial wants soft light. And now you see how the texture's kind of coming through. Isn't that cool? You can actually pick whichever blend mode you like. Not erase, obviously. Let's see here. I don't know. Color looks cool to me for mine. Oh, that looks nothing. That doesn't look good. These are just lots of, lots of options. Oh, look at exclusion there. That looks cool. Let me pause this to answer. Yes. So you click on the lasso tool here. And then um, up at the top, it says type, and there's four types. I use the polygonal one. Okay. Um, after it's selected, yes. So um, I had to pause because the phone rang. But honestly, pick whichever blend mode you like. I'm going to stick with the tutorial because it said soft light. Okay. Then my screen time is going to close out here. Let's see here. You can change um, the adjustments on that if you want. So make sure your image, or excuse me, your texture layer is selected. You can do adjustments, brightness, contrast. See how it gets like less and it gets crazy bright. Contrast means, let's go all the way. Let's get wild with it. You can do all kinds of stuff. Vibrance is one of my favorites. But it doesn't do anything on that one. Hmm, okay. So you can do that. Let me get out of here now. Dodge tool. Oh, let's play with the dodge tool. I don't even know if Pixlr has a dodge tool. Fill, eraser, draw, no, pen, blur, sharpen smudge, maybe? No, I don't think so. Oh, dodge. So it's this half circle, or it's a circle, and it's half gray, half white. So the dodge tool is when you want to lighten an area. So let's pretend you want um, up here where the eyebrows are to lighten an area. It's very, very subtle. Um, this is great if you take, when, when we take portraits, um, it's great if someone has like harsh shadows on their skin. You can make it look better. Mm, kind of looks better. Let's do shadows. And then you can also darken. So let's pretend on this highlight here, you want it to be darker. I'm telling you, it's so, so soft. It's not a huge difference. Um, but on portraits especially, using the dodge tool can be really, really helpful. To, so that there's not like crazy harsh highlights or crazy harsh shadows, okay? So do a, just a subtle play around with that. I'm going to have to pause this for right now, and then I'll make a second one.